Welcome to the New Life Behavior International video cast and podcast series. Presented by volunteer instructors, the New Life Behavior International series is presented in countries globally and in several on the African continent. Courses are available on nlbi.co.za and is absolutely free of charge. However, donations are welcome and completely voluntary. The core curriculum is a comprehensive study to discover a meaningful and personal relationship with God, with the objective to help individuals from all walks of life to be reconciled to God, reconciliation to families and society. The curriculum contains 174 lessons divided into 14 courses and is well received by both Christians and non-Christians alike. All the lessons are available on our website nlbi.co.za and you may communicate via email info at nlbi.co.za The outline of the curriculum is explained by volunteer instructor Oscar de Vries. These lessons will cover the following A sense of self A sense of family Parenting matters True freedom Christian marriage skills, Christian women, attitudes and behaviors, Christians against substance abuse, is a family net series, the seeker Bible study series, prisoners of Christ, managing my anger, Christians against sex addiction, managing my finance. In this way we say welcome to New Life Behavior Ministries. Hi listeners and lookers, watchers. Dag allemaal. Dankie as jylle kyk of luister. Welkom hier by ons. Welcome to us here at New Life Behavior. I, as you already know, am Oscar and a volunteer. And we are busy video casting all the lessons of New Life Behavior from 15 courses to provide you with a very, very wide spectrum of subjects and talks and things that are meant to be helpful to you in your circumstances. And it's directed from the word of God and we look at the Christian principles. But if you're not a believer, you're welcome to look at anything in the curriculum that could be of help to you. But our intention is to improve our behaviors and to draw ourselves closer to God. Thank you to Unlock Live for their um, Unlock Radio dot Live for their um, assistance in in recording these video casts for the benefit of all and for broadcasting to the people that they work with. So let's go into lesson number twelve, and we're going to touch briefly on lesson thirteen. And lesson 12 in the course 11, X1, Prisoners of Christ, it talks about your new way of life. Now, you see, what we're talking about here is turning the process of change into a new daily and lifelong way of living. They use the word modus operandi, but that just talks about the way. And, and today, one thing I can say is people don't like change, believe it or not. Sometimes we do, but most times we don't. But the one thing we can say today about modern living, modern life, our modern society, is that the only constant factor of modern living is change. Now, we've got to reflect after all of these lessons and say to ourselves, how did you, how did I, how have I changed? 
and congratulations to, to the multitude of changes that you have or may make in your life. It always feels good when we take positive steps. And there is what we call a successful change pattern. Firstly, we must see ourselves as people who have self-worth. And the self-worth that is worth salvaging, if it's not a good sense of self. And you see, low self-image plays right into Satan's hands. When we think we're unworthy, you see, I'm not worth the effort. Give up on me. Forget that I exist. And the answer is to view my value through the eyes of God that put Jesus on the cross to purchase my pardon. That's the value that you have and that I have. And as Romans 5 and verse 8, famous verse in God's word, which says, while we were yet sinners, God sent Christ to the cross. And the purpose of that was to bring salvation to everybody, including you. And so that's the first point. You've got to say we must see ourselves, our lives, as worth salvaging. And the second point that goes with it is that we must have an earnest desire to change. Remember the story about the man at the pool, the paralyzed man. He couldn't get anybody to, he couldn't get there to be healed, the, the, the healing waters. And he had nobody to take him there. When he got there, it was too late already. And then Jesus says to him, do you really want to get well? Well, after 38 years at lying at that pool, he wanted to. He said, yes, I want to. The problem we have in prison sometimes is that some prisoners become institutionalized. That means that's home for them. That's where they want to be. That's it. We get used to the system. And, and in other words, we, we decide not to change. We just decide our backs up against the wall. We don't want to change. We are quite happy where we are. And what we need to do is to say, I need to, in changing, you need to get accurate information. That's very important. In other words, we need to be sure we are receiving the truth that sets us free. And that's the word of God. Otherwise, we're just like a baby bird. You know, we just sort of would eat anything that our mother gives us or the, the, the parent provides because they've got absolutely no idea. So we need to use the word of God is for ourselves. We need to also know that Isaiah says that God's ways are beyond our thinking. And that we understand sometimes in life. That's not the way we thought, but sometimes we look back, we can see that God was thinking when we weren't. And the other thing we've got to do is to, to look at Psalm 119, where it says, your word of God, your Bible, if we call it that, is a light and a lamp. And following the will of God is at the heart of all positive life changes. So I have to see myself as we would say salvageable. We can be raised up. We're not scrap or junk on a heap. But we need to earnestly desire to change and learn what God wants me to do. Um, and, and if we take life lightly, as the book of Proverbs says, it says, you know, our laughter if we're cynical about this, will end in heartbreak. Um, many do not know, actually, what to do and exactly how to do it. And 
there is the need for gentle guidance and affirmation and assurance. You know, the Apostle Paul had this problem. This man that was out to destroy the church of our Lord. And nobody wanted to touch him. He said, die, okay, that chap, be careful. Until Barnabas, who was known as the son of encouragement, came along and said, no, no, Paul, you go with me. I will tell them who you are and how your life has changed. And so what we need to do, as the Bible says, we need to drink deeply of God's pure kindness, of God's word. This is what the book of 1 Peter 2, 2 is saying. And then it says, we also in change need to help others who are once where we stood. And through our, your and my life experiences, the Lord has been training and equipping you to help others. You know, the Bible tells us that we help ourselves and then we can help others. And the book of 1 Corinthians says to us that when we get into the situation that we're talking about, like Paul and Barnabas, for instance, God comes alongside. When we go through hard times, then he brings us alongside someone else. And this is coming from the book of Corinthians so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. So not only changing ourselves, but the successful change pattern is when we use our journey to bring others. And another encouragement is don't stop now. You've come a long way, but don't stop now. And you are sensitive. We need to be sensitive about God's will being done in our lives. We need to be remain flexible and ready to do the master or God's will. Now, we will never be 100% satisfied with our spiritual and growth and development. But that's okay, as long as it's happening. And... What one thing, what one thing am I not now doing that I need to start doing? What am I not doing that I need to start doing? And what one thing am I now doing that I need to stop doing? That's change. Don't stop. Take something out and put something else in its place. And I know we've read last time, we read Philippians chapter 12, and we looked here at verses 12 to 14. And if you'd allow me, I just need to read this again. He says, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have made it, but I am well on my way reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously, wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. Or the war. And that's what the book of Ephesians is trying to tell us, that we need to be clothed for the war that we're entering. And if you go to the book of Ephesians, and it's so wonderful to read the, the, the message translation, if I can just get there, chapter four, sorry, chapter six, and chapter 6 talks about wearing the whole armor of God. It says to us here, I'm just going to go there. I'm at chapter 6. Here we are. Here we are. And this is what it says. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. 
So take everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best materials. And put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. There is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. And then he, in this thing, he talks about the various armories, which you can go and read yourself, that we need to wear to be able to uh, defend ourselves. And then it says towards the end here about verse, where we now, verse 18, it says, pray hard and, and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Right, so this brings us as we start to close on this series. It says Jesus wants to come into, in, into your presence with a whole new life, a new beginning, a fresh start, and the most abundant life imaginable. You see, the Christian life is a life that is lived in the light. It's, it's walking in the light, as the book of John says, not in the dark. I'm getting better. I'm not sinless, but I sin less. My life is getting better. I don't want to lose what I've gained for anything in this world. And then I think appropriately, we can go to John chapter 14, because this fits with all of us. When it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. The book of Revelation holds the greatest promise to those who remain faithful to death. And it simply says, for those who are faithful unto death, I will give them a crown of life. And as the book of Corinthians confirms this, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that whole chapter that talks about death, when it says death is swallowed up in victory. Now all human beings, everybody, you and me, by the power of God can change. In fact, we can, we should continue to change for the rest of our lives. The older we get, now don't look at me, but the older we get, we need to continue change and changing for the better, growing closer to God for the rest of our lives. And the message is change and keep on changing until you die or Jesus comes, whichever comes first. In our concluding remarks here today, I want to just go to lesson 13 briefly, which you can study in your own time. And that is, remember Jesus is coming back. And the Bible tells us that we're not going to be, we actually don't know when that will be, when he uses a thief in the night, saying that we actually must get ready, we must stay ready, because he's going to come at a time that nobody knows. People have tried but it hasn't worked up till now. And seeking, loving, and serving God must be our highest priority while you're in prison. What about when you're released? Are you going to be that same person? Are you going to move forward and upward 
when one day you get to be released. And, you know, what does this mean in terms of our lives today? It means that we must accept the challenge to live by faith and not by sight and to continue that when our lives change and when we get to go home. And I think what we want to say to all of you, especially those prisoners in Christ, to our Christian brethren, congratulations. Congratulations, many enroll, but few finish. And hopefully you will keep these lessons and share them with others as well. And you need to pull these lessons, look at these lessons from time to time. We forget the past and we say, well, okay, I'm past there. But sometimes periodically we can pull the lessons out again. We can refresh ourselves or keep looking at the word of God. Congratulations in the sense that we realize the need to clothe ourselves with Christ and that we are spiritually prepared to go home to our eternal glory. And congratulations for, for looking, congratulations on the day that you will go home. And we pray it will be a pleasant and a joyous reunion with your family and with your loved ones. And perhaps most of all, that you'll be faithful in a local congregation, in your new place of employment, and also in the way that you will help others and to tell them of the amazing grace that God supplies. Let them see Jesus in you. And you could be, and you are living proof of the power that only God possesses to change been great to run this course with you and we will next time move on to the next one but let us just close with prayer father we've said so much our deepest and earnest desire father is that we would just look at your word and father we want your word to be our guide and to be our life and whenever, Father, we need help, that we can use the avenue of prayer to speak to you. We pray, Father, that we will be obedient to the call of the gospel. That we will do everything we can to put on Christ. To have your spirit live in us. So that, Father, we can enjoy your forgiveness. That your blood can cover us. And we know, Father, we can do this by being born again, by coming out of the waters of baptism, being buried with you, and in the likeness, Father, to be able to walk in a newness of life. And to embrace the message of new life and 1 Corinthians, which tells us that in Christ we are new creatures. We can be new creatures. The old is gone. The oldest past. So, Father, we pray for anybody that this message may be speaking today and for the series that we've conducted on prisoners in, in Christ. And we pray, Father, it will be helpful and uplifting that maybe what we've said from your word will be able to encourage us and change us. Father, thank you for Jesus, his gift on the cross. For everything, we're grateful in Christ's name. Amen. Now, just a few little easy tips. First of all, each lesson is going to ask you to note a few personal thoughts about the question that is asked. And then read the questions at the end of the lesson, but do not attempt to answer them. Then study or read the lesson. Then answer the questions. And then give yourself the opportunity to write some personal reflections. And you are more than welcome to send your answers and questions 
to info at nlbi.co.za.